I boom. All right, so now we on five reactions of innocent convicts set free. Let's see what they saying. It's got to be the worst thing in, in the world. It started in 2004 when the, the Honduran the immigrant was accused of killing two women. A man who was sentenced to die literally was on death row. So it's the case of this guy named Clemente Aguirre. And if I tell you this story, you'll say, you got to be making the up. It can't be true. 14 years, four months, and 19 days, I've been incarcerated. Damn, bro, I ain't gonna lie. Imagine being fucking locked up for 14 years and what is it, nine months and two days, whatever number you said at the end there, but 14 years, damn near 15 years off of something you didn't even do, bro. Bro, he gotta be like a, a billionaire down there now of all the stuff they gotta pay him back for it. You know what I'm saying? For the time lost, that, you know what I'm saying? Pain and suffering and shit like that. Bro, he gotta come up with a check because there's no way you set the nigga free with no money, bro. Oh, with a little bit of money. There's no way, bro. Ten years, three months of them in that row. Oh, ten of those On June 25th, 2004, oh, that nigga in aged like fucking hell in Tomonte, there. Tomonte, Florida. 24-year-old Clemente was indicted on charges of first-degree murder and burglary. A crime that he did not commit. From the start, Aguirre Harkin said he found the women dead, that he tried to help, and that's how their blood got on his clothes and his footprints. It was a gruesome crime that found his neighbors, 68-year-old Carol Barris and 47-year-old Cheryl Williams, stabbed to death. Stabbed to death. I did, I did do it. I my... However, despite Clemente protesting his innocence, Police decided he was the only possible suspect, and he was sentenced to death. What is that? How y'all? That's how y'all do things? Oh, it can't be anybody else. Like, I mean, there's no lead on the guy. There's nothing really and truly that we can go off of other than his word and you know, no other evidence. So it gotta be him, right? Come on, hey guys, lock him up. <laughs> lock this nigga. Now, how the fuck does that even work? That's how y'all do things, bro. What's happened to innocent until proven? Y'all didn't prove. How do y'all even get to that point? 14 years on death row, Clemente never stopped trying to clear his name. And he wasn't wrong either. As it turns out, Samantha, Shell's daughter, prior to the murder, was diagnosed with intermittent explosive disorder. Within inches of the mother's body and in a bathroom where the state argued the killer cleaned up is the daughter's blood a trail of the daughter's blood going to the bathroom and then the mother's blood on the outside of the daughter's window. And there's in the doctor's notes a few years before this happened where she says to her mother, I'm going to kill you. If I ever get out of here, I'll kill all of you. Then we find out that she has confessed all over town. We had people coming in all over the place testifying affidavits that she said, I killed my mother and my grandmother. I'll do it to you. With such irrefutable evidence implicating Cheryl's daughter, the day finally arrived for Clemente. No. I didn't know that nobody believed me back then. No one. Besides my mother, nobody believed me. And I thank you for it. From the bottom of my heart. He holds back tears and immediately heads towards right. friends and family to I was celebrate. Not smiling in our room, but today bro. is a I mean, probably brighter really day, not a, a new day. Judge. And I got good hopes. For the future. Well, y'all better pay that man, bro. This is Devante Sanford, who in 2007 nigga, was sentenced to 37 to 90 years in prison. A horrific quadruple murder that he did not commit. He was only 14 years old at the time. Devante was walking outside his home in his pajamas when he was arrested just three blocks away from a vicious crime scene involving four people and an AK-47 assault rifle. I mean, I, mean I, I don't want to rule out any possibilities, but y'all think a 14-year-old can handle a fucking AK and just gun down four people? I mean, it could. I don't know, Devante was taken know to the local police point, station, where it turns out that the police coerced him into a false confession with the use of leading questions and feeding him facts from the case. To make matters worse, his lawyer at the time didn't help by convincing him to enter a guilty plea. His current lawyer had this to say. In the course of their targeting him, oh, him. they literally- Wait, what the fuck? How long has he been in jail? It's, it's a whole grown ass man here. They say he was 14 when it happened. What the fuck? 
fabricated evidence and committed perjury. Wait, is he blind in to one eye? To ensure that this young man, uh, that they, they could get a conviction. But just three weeks later, there was another twist in this tale. And that twist came in the form of hitman Vincent Smothers. Hitman. Smothers was arrested for 12 murders, four of which turned out to be the case that Sanford was convicted for. The lack of action from the justice courts got the attention of the Northwestern Center of Wrongfully Convicted Youths, who pushed to reopen the case, which led to DeMonte's freedom in 2016. It was a homecoming nine years in the making. <laughs> Why you sound like your boy from Day Interestingly ABC? enough, Devante is thankful to one particular person for his freedom. His mom. Oh. Smothers. The guy who did it. He protected me, not the cops. The cops took advantage of me. It's because of this man. You know, I'm able to walk and breathe and just, you know, be at peace. As Wait. it turns out, all that time spent wrongfully incarcerated may have taken its toll on Sanford, who found it hard acclimatizing back into regular society. New and serious trouble for Devante Sanford. The 25-year-old was convicted of murder here in Detroit, then exonerated and released from prison. He was arrested for assault in 2018, Damn. and this time, there was no hitman to take the heat. Okay. In 1991, Queens, New York, 19-year-old Gregory Counts and 21-year-old Van Dyke Perry were sentenced to life in prison for a crime they did not commit. But they look like they the victim was held at knife bro. point out front of her Queens home, thrown into a car, and driven to Central Park, where she was then raped multiple times. She claimed wow, that the men responsible were Counts, Perry, and a third unknown man. In 2017, after having already served 11 years, the Innocence Project reinvestigated the Counts and Perry case using DNA that was retested. DNA cleared both Counts and Perry from the semen found on the victim. It led to a man who was deceased. Weird, right? So why would the victim make up such a heinous story and send two innocent men to jail? The answer will get your blood boiling. The complainant now admits that her boyfriend forced her to lie and falsely claimed these men sexually assaulted her. Her boyfriend was trying to avoid having to pay a debt to these two men. All that for a boyfriend avoiding debt, the things we do for money. Let's have a look as both Counts and Perry sit in court, hearing the sweet sound of freedom echoing throughout. They do their best to hold back their emotions. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't condone this, but you know what kind of fucking light Yagami type shit you gotta pull? You avoid debt by getting the niggas who you owe locked up? Nah, that's, that's a different type, bro. You a different breed, dog. I ain't gonna lie, bro. Nah, now, now you gotta pay Although debt, they are free and reintegrating jail. back into society now, it's clear that this horrible, unjust story will haunt both these men for the rest of their lives. It's nah. never going to be over. The reason why, because it tormented my life and it's my past. 1993, New Jersey. 22-year-old Tito Marino was murdered in his video store. Another gruesome death by stabbing. Eric Kelly What's and Ralph Lee stabbing? were both convicted of a crime they had no connection to. The whole story was put together by police using coercion and a sketchy eyewitness. They then used those statements against Lee, and that's how they nailed their conviction. It wasn't until once again- See? Yo, this is exactly what the, the previous video we just watched. This is exactly what they be doing right now. Look, literally, this is exactly what happened right now. Niggas trying to get promoted to DA, bro. Come on, bro. The Innocence Projects got involved in their case that Eric and Ralph felt a bit of hope. And the state has just dug in their heels ever since. They refused to investigate this other person, refused to talk to him, didn't look into his history, and instead are just, um, you know, blindly clinging to this conviction at all costs. Lee was released after 11 years. However, 11 it wasn't years. until 2018, after having spent 24 years in prison, that Kelly was finally given back his freedom, after new DNA evidence was presented to the judge in court. Therefore, in light of the foregoing reasons, I hope to be filed in both the sentence of three of the That smile was big, bro. Interestingly enough, we find Judge Joseph Portelli in full Karen mode. Yes. Listen to me. It's not a moment that 
for the, the moment of justice, okay? It's not something to celebrate or not celebrate away. We're not sure about you, but freedom after 24 years yeah. of wrongful incarceration seems like a pretty good reason to celebrate. What the fuck? No, but I just got free. He said, hold on now. Don't get too happy now. I'll say, before I lock you up again. Nigga, what? Nigga just got free for, from falsely accused, being falsely accused and then being locked up, you know what I'm saying, for a crime that they did not do for 24 years. You don't want to... The nigga can't crack a fucking smile after that? Nigga can't... <laughs> Nigga, did I just catch you having fun? Is that what, you, what the fuck? That's what I nigga pull him, bro. Come on, bro. Come on. That's what let nigga be happy, bro. Wait, is that the same judge talking Kelly about Lee some didn't let this smiling. dampen their moods. Both were hungry, high in spirits, and thankful for everyone that had played a part in their release. Face, bro. Mainly, I want to eat. <laughs> I'm a little hungry. Um, be with my legal team. I want to thank them. I want to thank my family. Um, first and foremost, um, it's been a long time. Um, I just don't know. I'm just out of words, baby. I'm just feeling good right now. That's all. What would you want someone who didn't know anything about your case to know? I'm an innocent man. I'm an innocent man. Uh, I mean. I mean, we we know that, but you know, you you saying that shit twice, and that being the only answer, kind of kind of leaning us in another direction. But let me stop. All's well that ends well, for now. For now. All right in the case of People versus Juan Ignacio Catalan, is that your true name? This is Juan Catalan, the man saved by sitcom, an alibi what? caught on camera, but not in the way you think. On May 13th, 2003, 16-year-old Martha Puebla, a witness in the case of a gang slaying, was shot and killed in front of her home in Sun Valley, California. It wasn't until three months later that the FBI arrested 24-year-old Juan Catalan during a raid in front of his family's machine shop. Juan was interrogated for hours. It seemed like they already had a huge amount of evidence against him. A witness sketch that looks like you a witness that was supposed to take the stand against your brother gets murdered in cold blood. It doesn't look good. But Juan consistently pleads his innocence, telling officers that they're trying to pin this crime on the wrong person. It's hard, bro. Imagine you trying to tell the truth and you know the truth. You trying to you trying to tell people, bro, and nobody believe you, bro. That shit is a different feeling, bro. When you know you telling the truth. And nobody believe you, bro. In a regular setting, that shit difficult. Imagine literally fighting for your life and it not working, bro. Nah, bro. I can't imagine that, bro. I can't, bro. Oh, Jesus. You killed somebody. Wait a minute. A little very strong word right there. I did not kill nobody. I would never kill nobody. I would never do anything to hurt anybody. Convince us otherwise. As Is it the other way sleeping, around? Juan remembered that he was at a Dodgers game with his daughter on that day. Dodgers game, bro. It's literally all coming back full fucking circle, bro. Literally, what they just, bro, bro. Come on, bro. Nah, this that's the universe, hey, hey. That's you, ain't it, God? God, that's you. That's you, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's hey. God, bro. But a stadium full of tens of thousands of people. What are the chances that someone captured him there? And even more so, the chances that you'd be able to retrieve said footage. True. Well, this is where this case becomes wild. Juan remembered he was on TV, but not the Dodgers cam. It just so happened that Larry David, the creator of Seinfeld and star of the HBO show Curb Your Enthusiasm, was shooting an episode in the exact same aisle as Catalan and his daughter. The episode was that I picked up a hooker in the carpool lane and took her to Dodger Stadium. What are the chances? Juan's lawyer contacted HBO, got access to the footage of that episode, and hey, ran the tapes. Fucking, yo, hey, that's a W lawyer, bro. She, f what the hell? Hours of research brought no results, and he was running out of tape and felt like he wasn't going to get what he needed. And then, there it was, the Let's once in a lifetime it. chance of an alibi caught on tape. And I pointed at the screen and I said, that's him, that's him, roll that back. This footage, combined with a phone call made to his girlfriend at the exact time he was leaving the stadium, led to his case being thrown out.
both detectives were found guilty of coercion and falsifying their reports. Wait, As for Juan, what can you say? Talk about being in the right place at the right time. From getting the tickets on the day of to being caught on camera. Um, you know what kind what of are the chances luck? that out of you know 56, 58,000 seats you know they're filming on my aisle. You know, I look at it like I did win the lottery because that actually is crazy, I bro. got a new opportunity at life, you know. Bro, imagine with bro. my family. I was so happy and grateful for that. Imagine, bro. Nigga, you go to a Dodgers game and you just so happen to be in the same episode of, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying, a Seinfeld, you know what I'm saying, a Seinfeld episode, nigga? Now, he just so happened to be, you know what I'm saying, casually recording this uh, episode for Seinfeld. And you was inside of the video and that shit saved you, bro. You know what kind of, you know what the odds of that are, bro? Nah, bro. Nah. I need that kind of luck. I ain't gonna lie. I need that. I need that right there, bro. But well, that's kind of sad, though. They, these people don't spend more than half their life. Um, shoot. Yeah, like half their life or like a little bit around there, around half their life at the time in jail for something they even do, bro. That shit heartbreaking, bro, bro. I'm saying. I don't, I don't know, bro. I pray that don't ever happen to me or none of y'all.